Happy Wednesday and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Rocketeer Minute, where each and every day, Monday through Friday, we go over one minute of the greatest adventure movie Walt Disney's ever made, the 1991 Joe Johnston-directed feature, The Rocketeer. I'm one of your hosts, Jim O'Kane of TVDads.com. And I'm Hal Bryan, an airplane nerd from the experimental... Whoa. Ooh. You hear that, Jim? Yeah. You're listening to a special Billy Campbell episode on the Rocketeer Minute. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Campbell. <laughs> it never, it never gets better. <laughs> <laughs> and it never gets old, if you ask me. Oh, uh, you didn't ask me, did you? And evergreen, no. evergreen. That's <laughs> right. Well, uh, welcome back to, to Billy Campbell, the Rocketeer himself, joining us again after, it's been a while. It's, been, it's almost, almost over a week, so <laughs> it's, it's funny how, uh, how time flies. But I've been going oh, through withdrawals. No pun intended. Yeah. No. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Too late. Uh, wow. <laughs> Leave it to Jim. Yeah, we're getting getting down to the not the bitter end. It's a happy ending in this in this movie. But we're getting really close. We're down to the final. This is eleven to go. That's right. Ah, oh, boy. So uh, nothing but nothing but great epi- episodes coming up. Don't we're we're gonna we're gonna work on that. <laughs> We've had a really good run on the, on the show, and it's uh, it's been exciting. We've had a lot of you know entertaining guests and uh, and a lot of great responses from uh, from people in the in the business and and people mm. listening to the podcast and just simple fans, the finheads out there that uh, I've had a hoot. A I've had a it, hoot listening I, listening to the to the podcast. Of course, I I haven't been able to listen to every single one, but uh, but a, a fair amount of them, and it's been uh, it's been a, a real pleasure. To, to find out much more about this this film than I than I ever knew, and and to be honest, that that I really want to know. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no, it's 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 been great, and I, we really do want to want to say we really appreciate the fans that have been uh, have been communicating back with us about how uh, how much they enjoy the the show and enjoy the movie, and it's it's quite a community out there that I think nobody's ever gotten in touch with that uh, that we're hearing a lot from. Um, and Hal, I think we had a we, we actually had a great communication this past week. It was really uh, very touching. I, I thought. Yeah, we really got a uh, got a powerful, powerful email, and uh, um, I almost feel like we should cue up some music or something. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get through this one. Uh, it's it's not super long, but I will read it uh, the whole thing. So uh, so uh, Billy, sit back, relax. Um, here's I a. I have a can of uh, of of uh, Czechoslovakia is best. Ah, a pilsner, perhaps. Yeah. Yes, That's wonderful, excellent. All right, well, here's uh, here's a wonderful note from uh, from our friend Sam McLean uh, from Pensacola, Florida, and uh, he got us right away with the subject line. I may be alive because of the Rocketeer. Hey, fellas! First off, as a giant comic book nerd, I own every Marvel movie. I really think my love for movies and especially superheroes comes from the Rocketeer. I'm disabled. From birth, I was paralyzed from the waist down. When I was 14, I had major back surgery. I was unable to get out of bed for 10 weeks. Truly one of the most challenging times of my life. I had seen the Rocketeer when it was first released on VHS, but in those days I didn't scoop up my favorite movies when they hit the shelves. After my surgery, they had a VCR and TV in my room. The movie selection in the library wasn't the best. There were like six movies. Thankfully, though, one of those movies was The Rocketeer. As I faced all of the challenges to do with surgery, at times feeling close to death, I watched The Rocketeer. It offered escapism, and many times I felt Eddie Valentine's words, Go get him, kid, were directed straight to me. As Cliff lifted off, I felt my spirits soar. So in some ways, the Rocketeer gave me the strength to recover. I'm now 39 and probably also have a comma in the number of times I've seen the Rocketeer. Your podcast has reignited my passion for this movie. Please, if you have Billy Campbell on again, tell him thank you for me. I am forever connected with this film. I love you guys, and I'm happy to be part of the Finhead family. Sam. Wow. Mm. Okay. Wow. Well, really, thank thanks for that uh, that letter, Sam. It's uh, I, I never thought I never thought this podcast would af- would affect so many people as much as as much as it did. Um, yeah, same kinda... same here, and uh, and Sam, boy, we love you too. We love uh, we love the whole family out there. I. That's uh, goes for me as well. 
Sam. That's uh, one of the loveliest things I've I've uh, I've heard. Wow. And uh, you know, and here, here I thought it was just a, a movie about a guy with a with a, with a rocket pack, <laughs> but right. it it, uh, it it's really it's really great, and I, I think that's that's the common element that we hear from from a lot of the fans. It really it changed the way they looked at at movies, at the way at, this it movies. It's it's really easy to be cynical and. Uh, you know, it, making making a movie that that kind of um, that that brings you down, but this movie is so uplifting, mm. and uh, it's something you can turn on and, and watch and, and feel better about about the world in general. Um, you know, taking on the bad guys and mm. and uh, win, you know winning winning at the end. Uh, it's it, it's a very uh, it, it it's there as a as a as a constant comfort and uh, and a constant inspiration. So. Um, it is a, a that's a good word, Jim. It's a constant. It's a constant source of uh, it's it's just a happy thing. It's happy and it's upbeat. And you read a, a letter uh, from somebody like Sam, and you think about uh, some of the things he faced. I just I shake my head. I said I've never had a hard day in my life by comparison. No. Uh, you know whatever whatever sort of struggles that all of us go through, but uh, um, it's it's humbling uh, for Jim and for me to be a, a, a small sort of vehicle in this and. Uh, uh, and to be able to, uh, as I have said many times, one of the best things about this show is is being able to reach out to people like you, Billy, and just say hey, thank you. This uh, this movie's meant a lot, mm-hmm. um, but even more so to be the the conduit through which somebody like Sam uh, can can say thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, thank you, Sam. Thank you. And and thanks for listening to the show. It's it's good it's good knowing that uh, that. This is actually reaching reaching out to to people. Sometimes we feel like we're talking and nobody's hearing, but uh, it, it's great to be part of this this finhead community. I yeah. think that's a. I think uh, include me in that uh, little circle. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank thank you again, Sam. And uh, I guess we'll go back to uh, talking about the minute. We're yeah. That's uh, it's, it's. I gotta say, it's tough to shift gears. <laughs> it's, uh, after, uh, I agree. After great I agree. Message, message and, like uh, that. Yeah. This is uh, it, this minute actually starts with uh, with the rocketeer getting knocked flat on his back, which I think is how we all kind of feel. Um, it, <laughs> it's uh, quite a quite a slide there, Bill. You were fighting in kind of a. I mean, this this is an uh, you know a, a really big action scene, but it's incredibly tight corners. It's a very small space. It was. Um, it was a little um, rig they had in in a, in, the, in a warehouse in San Pedro, uh, same place we shot um, Howard Hughes, uh, you know, the thing yeah. with the spruce goose and all that. And um, uh, I remember this particular rig was up in the air, some twelve or so feet 15 feet had to climb a ladder to get up to it and then it would move down a track uh very slowly and on the floor of the stage they had uh built all this sort of um well black you know this cloth they have uh, called duvetine it's a uh, black cloth and they they made this uh, topography to have all these little twinkly lights um, to be the uh, you know the lights of uh, Hollywood basically. So the the whole rig of the the what do you call that thing, Jim? The it, it, it's a, cockpit it, it's a, or the cab, right? Is yeah, it, this is, is, the, is the, it? the cab uh, in the yeah. sort of forward portion of the gondola. The whole cab rig would uh, just slowly move down this this track while we were fighting, while the cameras uh, sort of shoot, shooting at an angle to see the city lights below. And I remember them figuring out a way, and it's very subtle and very, very effective. They wanted to give you the feeling of the vibration of the Zeppelin. And so they, I, they sort of, uh, they didn't weld it. They s- somehow fixed a, a drill. I think it was a drill to the camera housing they put a off-weighted bit in the in the mouth of the drill so that when it was spinning it gave a 
a vibration to the camera. And if you'll notice, um, uh, you, you can see it. It's just, the camera is just vibrating ever so slightly. And, and it, what it does is convey the, you know, the vibration of this gargantuan Zeppelin as it plies through the, the sky over Hollywood. It was really cool. It was old-fashioned movie making. Yeah, it's it's amazing how many cuts there are. I'm just just uh, scrubbing through this particular minute. I counted at least 35 cuts, so it's like every other second there's another there's another scene, and you're getting your head smashed through a couple of windows, and uh, they went through a lot of candy glass. It looks like. Um, <laughs> yeah, they did. They did indeed. But so, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, Billy, at this point in the in the shooting, I'm not sure where this would have fallen in the sequence, but. Uh, how much interaction had you had with with Timothy Dalton by this point? Would you have already shot the South Seas Club stuff? You know, I can't. I can't really. I can't really remember. Um, I I don't remember. I wish I had. So, you know, I wish I had kept a lot of stuff. Really, what I wish I had kept was all my call sheets and uh, you know, one liner, so that I would have all these years later a, an overview of of what it had all been but uh no i don't i don't remember if uh how, how much how well we knew each other by then was there anything was there anything weird at all in your head about uh i mean let's face it about a fist fight with james bond is that <laughs> and and was it i wonder was it hard for him to think okay this time i have to lose no spoilers but you know well He's not the no. good guy in this one. Yeah, no, it's true. But uh, the one thing I do remember, um, I mean, of course, I was thrilled to be having a fist fight with James Bond. That was thrilling. Everything about this was thrilling for me. I mean, it was my first movie. I was just thrilled from, you know, I was thrilled by lunch every day. I was thrilled. <laughs> by oh, there's, your, but, there's the memoir title right there. Yeah. Thrilled, by, thrilled by, yeah. by lunch. Thrilled cookies. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I love it. Uh, uh, but uh, yes, of course, I was thrilled to be fighting with Timothy. And uh, the only thing I really remember talking about the fight was that I really thought, I felt very strongly that uh, that Cliff should just be outgunned, that he should, you know, that that uh, Timothy would ha would would uh, have it all over him fight wise. And um, uh, I think Timothy was a little surprised because he thought. I think I think there was a conversation we had with Joe, and he and Joe basically said, "What do you think about this?" And I said, "Here's what I think." And I think everybody thought that I was going to say, "Yeah, I think I'm the hero of the movie, and I should, you know, this should I should really plug it to him, and and uh, you know, or we should at least go toe to toe and and you know, trade licks and whatever." And I basically I said, "I." I think you ought to just beat the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's a movie guy. He knows how to fight. He's a spy. He's a he's a saboteur, yeah. and uh, uh, he really should just pound me. And in the end, I I I get one up on him uh, with the bubble gum. And Joe was like, "That's great." Yeah. And I think uh, I think Timothy was just surprised because. Uh, Pleasantly surprised, but uh, I think he expected that I would want to be the hero. Yeah, I don't know, you know, something. Yeah. No, it's, Sometimes it's it's more heroic to, you know, be human. Yeah. It, uh, That's what I really what I love about this movie anyway, because it's not a superhero movie. It's not. He's just a flyboy. Right. Yeah. He he's got the cracked ribs to prove. Well, that's another minute. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Cliff. The, uh, Cliff, uh, beginning to end in this movie is one of those guys where you flip back and forth, saying, you know, I either want to be that guy or at least want to be friends with him. So, yeah, yeah. And then uh, then you walk out saying, "Boy, I hope the guy who plays him isn't a real jerk in real life." <laughs> I, I hope that's not the case. And guess what? Yeah, yeah. it's not. Uh, I, I, one of the things that I can't remember if Danny Belson said it on our show or if he said it in an interview somewhere else, but that the line about Timothy Dalton saying, I do my own stunts came out of something like Empire Magazine or Entertainment Weekly where Timothy Dalton was proud of himself for doing his own stunts on the mm -hmm. Bond movie. So dropping mm -hmm. that in to the mm -hmm. script was just you know a, a pure Dalton thing. That is fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Life follows art, but or yeah. life follows Empire Magazine or something. <laughs> So, Billy, in uh, oh, about second 15 or so, um, you're getting uh, your head sort of smacked into that uh, that wooden mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm. And so 
tell us a little bit just about how you how you do that. Are you know he's got his hands on your shoulders? Are you sort of driving the motion to make sure you you're not really smacking your head? How would you how would you, you state know, something I, like that? I think, uh, as I recall, I was pretty well really smacking my head in there. I mean, it, it's a hollow wooden box, do you know, and and it makes a heck of a lot more noise and looks a heck of a lot more solid than it is. Uh, I smacked my head against it a couple of times just as we were rehearsing the scene, saying, look, Timothy, here. And and I just went whack, 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 <laughs> whacked my head into it. I'm like, listen, you can just shove my head into it. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> and so he's like, all right. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> So uh, and talk about you know, doing I mean, your own stunts, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. one of the, it's one of those things. Like there are certain things that just don't hurt, like aluminum garage doors. They make a heck of a racket. Yeah, but it's like jumping into a mattress. It's so soft, it doesn't hurt in the least, and you can you can literally sprint into one, and which I've done, and 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 then turn in the air and slam it into it with your back and it doesn't hurt at all and it it sounds like it's like you're dying or should be dying <laughs> so this was just one of those things you know it was a hollow basically soft wooden box that made a lot of racket but uh it didn't it didn't hurt at all and i didn't have a i don't recall having a even having a sore back of my head notice noticing the, the shots in here is you're going back and forth between the two of you and jennifer um it, I, Jennifer looks like she was probably shot on a whole nother day because that that whole setup is on the other side of the uh, the cab, and uh, she just has a couple of inserts where she picks up the very pistol. I think it's it was um, almost certainly all in the same shot in the same period of time. I don't recall taking more than a day to shoot it, but we might have done. But I know, I mean, she was there, and we, we did shoot it. We were all there together. So. I, I would imagine it would be like a, a wild set on the, the like the wild wall between the front and the back of the cab so that they could shoot Jennifer's sides uh, as it rolled down that ramp to get the uh, the background going and then, then shooting again with your half so that there's room for that big Panavision camera. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think there were any wild walls in this uh, in this cab. They had... You know, it was all one thing going down a track, and I, I just don't think they had. I, I don't recall there being any, any, anything wild about it, because it. I, I guess it had to all be of one piece to sort of yeah. be on the track and everything. And it's amazing what you were saying about the track and the the lights and things in the background, because <laughs> you don't get that many clear looks out the window, and you don't get that many clear you know, much of a clear view. And, you know, you almost could have told me, well, they probably just, they just shot this, you know, inside with black walls behind it. Just on, yeah. on ground no, level. But, if but, you look... but, but every once in a while you get when those you're, When you're hanging out the, when you're hanging out the window, you can see the motion. Yeah. yeah if you like look closely, I'm sort of scrubbing through myself. There's the head on the box. It looks like it hurts. <laughs> um, and the calipers, we had to be careful yes. with those. Oh yeah. There were, now I'm not seeing so, I'm not seeing too many of the darn lights right well, now. It all looks black. But you know, just as uh, as Jim was saying, um, second forty seven or so, and uh, before we're looking, uh, before we change shots to look down on you out the window, as uh, as Dalton is pushing you through the window, you do get a good mm -hmm. glimpse of lights and even some hillsides and things back there, and it's just yeah. enough to make it uh, really suggestive. And then that shot again, looking down at you, is is terrific. Oh, there you go. Yep. Hanging out, hanging out the window. You can see there, right there yeah. Yeah. in the back of my close up, hanging out the window. Yeah. Yeah. So That's all just, those are all just like little Christmas lights on, on, uh, on a black blanket. <laughs> and it, it comes across great. It just yeah, really, it really, really does, so doesn't well. it? The, uh, the flare itself, was that a practical, uh, floor effect or was that CGI ed later? I think some of that was, uh, I can't remember. I think if you scrub through very when, slowly, oh, when she shoots, it looks uh, to me it looks almost like there's a there's the smoke the smoke from her pistol, but then it looks I, I keep thinking that that the light effect is just an added in. Yeah, I think the light effect is added in because if you if you scrub very closely, and you look in that first clear frame at the pistol and they and where it's aimed, it's not aimed where the um, yeah where where the flares headed where the flare goes 
Yeah, it's and it's, really you get this weird sort of arc in the in the flare, yeah. like it's already falling. You know, yeah. Yeah. if you would, you know, we would shoot it straight up. And but it's pretty good. It's, that's excellent. I mean, yeah. Oh. It's... And and of course, by flare we mean uh, the signal or signal patronen uh, that was uh, fired from the Leucht pistola, as you see oh, on the uh, the lovely green nits, uh, the green we? box. <laughs> no, just doing a little bit for our German listeners, of which I'm sure there are scores. <laughs> oh. I love this. In it, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't oh, mean to deprive you. I was just uh, a quick tangent before we uh, we get closer mm-hmm. to the end of the minute. Speaking of uh, of picking nits, uh, as, as I as I do, there's a great uh, a great view at about second eighteen um, where uh, uh, Dalton is grabbing the uh, compass or calipers uh, to start stabbing you, and we see that aeronautical chart sitting there, and I it's a little bit. It's not. Not drastically so. It's a little bit too new for the era with a few of the things. But the nice thing is you can see, uh, you can make out a couple of things like the restricted area numbers. And so this is uh, this is the Los Angeles area. And just about under Dalton's fingertips, below that uh, little bits of broken glass, would be what is now Edwards Air Force Base. And so at the time, it was oh. Muroc uh, uh, Dry Lake and, and all of that. And those uh, restricted areas identify that as places you, you couldn't fly now. So I say, again, it's a little bit too new, but the symbology on these charts really hasn't changed all that much. I mean, I would go buy one today and and you could look at the one from the 30s and, and still recognize everything. Just a lot of some of the symbology changes a bit over the years. But nice that they got the right chart in the right spot. When, yeah. the, uh, when, the, when the Navy had uh, had uh, dirigibles on the West Coast, where were they where were they based in Los Angeles? Were, were there, you know, that's a good question. I'm not sure about Los Angeles. The big base uh, was Moffett Field up in the Bay Area. Oh, okay. um, but uh, you know, I think we've got uh, we've got an airship expert coming on here soon, so we'll, and we can bug him about that. But I remember uh, just going out to see Moffett Field and driving by there, seeing the big hangars, even as a kid in the seventies. Uh, those huge hangars were still there, and in fact, uh, Google bought one of them and refurbished it, and uh, is uh, sort of operating it in partnership with with NASA. Actually, he would have been on yesterday's episode. We're oh my gosh! Order, so. so remember yesterday when I asked him that yeah. question? <laughs> Funny how pressing you were to, to ask him about that. That's that was... a, yeah, that's a, that's amazing, and. Uh, you, Billy, next time you're you're shooting a film and you make things out of sequence, if you would just periodically yep. look at the camera and just break the fourth wall and say, well, you know, we make these things out of order. So I'm punching him now, but really I'm shaking hands with him yesterday. So that would that would make me feel a lot more professional about my work here. Uh, the, the other thing that, that I was just wondering is, as we're getting to the, the, the very end of this particular minute is fellow who is the, he's not a sermon tag long, he's a, uh, is he one of, or maybe he is the, the fellow that's on the ground mm. and doing very careful acting work from the floor? Is that? Uh, I mean, do they? Is he the first one on the set that does he have to like? He seems to have the longest time being <laughs> being you know, inert. still. <laughs> yeah, I think he's. Uh, I think he's actually a dummy. Is, um, is he, okay. At certain point, that guy. I'm looking at him now, and yes, I think he's a dummy. Oh, okay. I yeah. was just wondering if because he he's the one that fell down the stairs when yeah. when he went up to find you. Yeah. Uh, I, I was I was wondering about that because I was like oh, it's an awful lot to pay a guy to be sitting <laughs> sitting on the stage all day. So okay, he just no. switched out to a. Uh, I think he was switched out. Yeah. That's yeah. showbiz. Okay. Quite a great uh, kinetic episode. I think would be the best way to describe this particular minute. But we've got uh, we've got more flames and mayhem to talk about tomorrow. So let's mm. uh, let, let's hold off until uh, until Thursday. And um, we shall. Yes. So uh, for all you finheads out there and uh, lovers of the show and the, and the movie and all that, uh, if you'd like to continue the conversation, we are available always online. You can find us at Twitter, all the usual places, Twitter, Rocketeer Minute. Uh, find us at Facebook, facebook.com slash Rocketeer Minute. Find us at the great big website, RocketeerMinute.com. Catch up on all the previous episodes that some people may have missed. Uh, so uh, go, go out there and fi- find that. Also lots of cool swag that you can get from Amazon to learn more about the Rocketeer. Uh, so we'll join you here tomorrow as we watch the continually uh, disappointing trip of, of the Luxembourg as it heads toward uh, <laughs> ever closer to Los Angeles. The here doomed the Luxembourg. Yeah, it's the poor Luxembourg. They just can't catch a break. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll see you all here tomorrow on the Rocketeer Minute. So until next time, over and out. Over and out, boys.
get him, kid. 